if we talk about local banking, we're talking about fintech. Fintech is a recent phenomenon with regard to the fact that um, the underbank, if you will, the um, uh, inclusiveness of all and sundry in the economy. Fintech is an opportunity to digitize the economy. These are technology transactions. These are technology payment system. That's what fintech is all about. You don't necessarily need a banking license to establish how payment systems are done. Many people think it might be a threat to the banking industry. No, it's not going to be a threat. It will create a symbiotic relationship, if you will, a partnership, if you will. That's what fintech is all about. In the Nigerian context, do you think there's enough to really give impetus to tech and technology, mobile money, digitization? Because of the infrastructure issues, isn't it? Broadband is a challenge. Electricity has been a challenge. Setting up these new technologies that leapfrog how much of a challenge would that be in the Nigerian environment? We have a population of 180 million and connected lines, mobile phones, is above 100 million, close to about 140 million. That gives you a remarkable number of per capita usage of mobile phone or connected lines. What is only not very well addressed that has not done remarkably well is area of broadband. You, you're right about that. So are many other African countries. Broadband is a recent phenomenon that is enabled by creation of more bandwidth. And the infrastructure you need for that is for the regulators to create and apportion more spectrum. And as long as we've been able to roll out the GSM, We've been able to roll out quite a lot of connectivity by way of having almost 80, 90 percent of the population enabled by way of um, GSM uh, mobile connectivity. The broadband will come. Let's just expand this conversation a little bit further and talk about mergers and acquisitions, expansion and growth. We are seeing a lot of movement, especially involving international banks, uh, South African banks. They all have a much bigger footprint um, across other markets in Africa. When are the Nigerian banks going to step up? What we've experienced over the years is a number of banks that are beginning to f challenge or have challenges in terms of uh, being able to um, uh, uh, to move as fast as uh, the opportunity may provide for them. And if we're talking about mergers and acquisition, I don't think too many Nigerian banks are acquiring each other, not now. It's going to take a while before Nigerian banks begin to experience the opportunity to uh, participate in mergers and acquisition. So let's just talk about lessons you've learned. You are, by all accounts, a titan in Nigerian business, a founder of one of the largest banks by assets and market share, for investors looking to come in. What would you say some of the lessons you've learned are about starting a business in a very complex environment like Nigeria and maintaining it? Well, I don't think that qualifies me to be a titan either. <laughs> At our own time, when we were creating uh, or building the banking industry, if you will, the opportunities were different, which, and the experience was also different. And I'll refer to it as time and chance. Time and chance meaning that at our own time, banking licenses were opened up by the government at that time. But the privileges then that existed at that time is completely different from the privileges that existed at this point in time. And the adversity, the environment created for us gave us the opportunity to explore and to explode. Nigerian entrepreneurs are very, very aggressive and they do help to create the kind of opportunities that we're looking for. And your hope is in them? The most important thing is the fact that the government is beginning to create a neighboring environment for all of us to blossom in our businesses.